touching the floor. Whoa! Okay, and then when I count to three, we're gonna jump up all together as high as you can. You guys ready? One, two, three!
of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. If you wanna be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. You wanna be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. If you wanna be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. If you wanna be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, 'cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. If you wanna be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, 'cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. The fruit of the spirit is not a grape. You wanna be a grape? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, 'cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Hello, children. Good morning. Welcome back. I pray y'all are safe and staying warm. It's been a very, very cold week, and I hope that y'all are staying safe and warm. Um, I hope y'all uh, enjoyed the music. And now let's bow our little heads and we'll say our prayer so we can get started. Okay, so let's bow our heads, and we say, "Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come." It will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, children. So go get your items that you need, and so we can do our communion. Okay. All right, I'll give you a couple of seconds, and then we'll do it. All right. On the night that he was going to be betrayed, he said, "Well, let's say a prayer first, okay? Lord, thank you for bringing us together, Lord God, for keeping us safe and keeping us warm. Lord God, thank you, thank you." For bringing us together once again, I pray that we all enjoy the lessons, and I pray that you, that we all stay together as a family. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. The night that he was going to be betrayed, he took a bread, piece of bread. He broke it. He passed it to his disciples and his friends, and he said, "This is my body." Which will be given up for you. In the same manner, he took the cup. He raised it. He blessed it, and he said, "This is my blood, the new covenant, the new promise, which will be shed for you. Do this every time you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup. Do this in remembrance of me." Lord, we thank you for. All that you have provided for us, Lord God, 
Amen. Now we eat. And we drink. And we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you took for us. We love you and we honor you. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to go to our daily bread. And we are going to read out of the book of James, chapter 4, from 1 through 12. Okay? So get your daily bread, get your Bibles, and we read. And this is the word of the, of the Lord. James, chapter 4, 1 through 12. Drawing close to God. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have. But you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away and take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulteress, don't you realize? That friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously as the scriptures say. God opposes the the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up in honor. Okay. Now, what does that all mean? Well, we're going to talk about how something that I think y'all will understand. We can't be fighting with each other. We can't be arguing with each other and, and then expect God to bless us and give us what we pray for. Remember, we were talking about how praying is very, very important. And it is. You pray for what you want and what you need. And God knows what it is that you want and you need. He'll give you the desires of your heart. What's a desire, a want, something that, that God knows that you really, really want. And I'm not talking about material things like, I really, really want to be nice. I really, really, really want to be likable. I really, really want to be my, my friend's best friend. I want to be the best friend that my best friend can have. So what does it take to, to do that? You surrender. And sometimes I might think surrender means like if, if somebody says, um, I want you to surrender, that means to give up. And we'll see, it's different. In the Bible, to surrender means to give yourself to, the, to God. You give Him everything. So we're going to talk about today how we submit ourselves to God. Okay? When we trust God and give Him all, our, our all, 
He blesses us and He cares for us. Now, prepare ahead and be sure to know that this is something that is very important. Okay? God knows everything. Remember, we talked about that. God knows everything. All right. Now, suppose that we're all sitting in this room together and I give you all a piece of chocolate candy, a chocolate kiss. Let's say a chocolate kiss. Valentine's just passed, so I had a lot of chocolate kisses left over, so I gave them out to everybody. Okay? I'm going to give you each one. Let's pretend I give each one of you one. Don't eat it yet. Hold on to it. All right? Just hold on to it. All right. So... Now, I know that the candy that you have in your hand, the pretend candy that you have in your hand, looks delicious, and I know that you want to eat it right away. But don't, not yet, okay? Now, we're going to talk, like I said, we're going to talk about surrender. Now, if I were a police officer and you were a robber and I shot at surrender, what would you do? You would stop, right? Okay. But what does surrender actually mean? Like I told you, surrender can mean to give in, can mean to give in or to give up, or to admit that you've been beat. Defeat. Those meanings remind someone who is kind of like not very strong and kind of they're being bullied, right? Because you're, you're being asked to surrender. Somebody's bullying you, saying, surrender. They sound pretty bad. But God also asks us to surrender. And it's not quite the same thing. So what does surrender mean in the church? Uh -oh. Sorry, guys. I'm here at home, and I'm trying to improvise. Okay. What does it mean to surrender in the church? I, I want to show you. Okay? Now, Pretend that I'm coming around with a bag and I'm telling you to give me that chocolate kiss. Put it in the bag. I want you to surrender the candy. Surrender it. It's your choice. You can surrender it, give it back, or not. That's what I'm asking you to surrender it, okay? When we talk about surrendering at church, some people think of that word in the same way I've just been describing that they think surrendering is to Jesus means giving up everything that is fun or important or that is not, but it's not like that. When you surrender something to God, when you willingly give Him something that means a lot to you, it honors Him. It will show God that He is the most important thing in your life. It tells God that you trust Him completely. Now, do y'all understand? Surrendering something to God means that He has the number one place in your heart. That's what it's all about. It shows that you love God above all else. But that can really be hard to do. It's like, will you surrender your kiss to me right, around, right now? Your chocolate kiss? Like I said, if you're, it's your choice. You don't have to. But if you trust me, you will do it. That's surrender. That's and if and say you did put that candy in the and you did give me that candy bag. How did that make you feel? What else might God want you to surrender? Grown ups, you can answer too. But here's the neat thing about surrendering to God. When you honor God, you trust Him with your most special things. Your dreams, your hopes, your friends, your stuff. He honors that right back. Not because He has to, but because He loves us. And He wants to show us His love. When God gives us things, they're always way better than what we would have planned for ourselves. Kind of like this. Suppose we were together in the room again and I took out a big bag of chocolate and I gave it to y'all. Wouldn't that be nice? 
You surrender a little bitty kiss and you get a big chocolate. If we were together, I owe you a candy whenever we get back together, okay? We'll try it when we get together. See who's going to surrender what they think means the world to them. Okay? We can trust God with everything we have and everything we hope for. He is good. He is faithful and a loving God who wants us to trust Him with all that we have. And when you do that, He will bless us in very amazing ways. In amazing ways. Because remember, He is our friend. He is our prov provider. He is our healer. He is our redeemer. He is our everything. Okay, children? Let's bow our heads and let's say a prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you that we can trust you with everything, Lord God. Big things and little things. Thank you for the generous generous blessings that you, that you provide for us, Lord God. That you bless us with. All because we choose to trust you. And because you trust us to trust in you. Lord God, we love you. Lord, and we honor you. In your son's most beautiful, beautiful, precious name, we say thank you. Amen. Amen. So, remember children, all to Jesus. All to Jesus, no matter what. Everything is for Jesus. You can't hold one little thing and expect Jesus not to make multiply it if you don't pray about it. If you pray about something, you just better prepare for the answer, for the prayer, the answered prayer that he's going to give you. Children, I love you and I miss you so much. I tried to call y'all on Monday, but for some reason I didn't get to speak to any of y'all. I spoke to some of the parents, but I didn't speak to any of y'all. I asked them to ask y'all to call me, but I guess y'all are just too busy and have too much going on. I'll try again soon. I love you, and I miss you. Just bow our little heads, and let's thank God for today's lesson, for bringing us together once again. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for bringing us together, Lord God. We love you and we thank you. Thank you for keeping us warm in this cold weather. Thank you for providing the electricity that we need for our schooling and for our heat. Lord God, bless our bishop, our pastor, our minister, and our leaders. Keep us all safe and in your most loving hands. We love you. We thank you. Amen. I love you, children. Take care. Besitos.